This is the Heat Geek Mini Store Extra Small, a heat store designed to work with your heat pump, provide all your hot water needs and take as little space as possible. In this video I'll be running several tests on this unit. The most important of those tests is going to be the wife test. Because if my wife Natalie is not happy with the hot water performance of the Mini Store, then the chances are this unit is a too risky proposition for you as well. The Mini Store is basically a heat store. And the difference between heat store and, and a cylinder is the fact that heat stores don't store domestic hot water. Uh, they have a coil going through them with mains water that goes through the body of water that's kept at 55 or 60 degrees. And by going through that water, the coil extracts energy from that water and comes out hot on the other end. So we only have four connections, mains in, hot out, flow and return. Because we're not storing any water, we don't need expansion vessels and we don't need to follow G3 regulations, which require temperature and pressure relief valve, thermal cutouts. So the whole design of it is much, much simpler. This little device here is a tampering valve. It's a device that controls the uh, temperature of the outlet of the store because there, there is a big chance that we're going to have temperatures here of around 60 or over 60 degrees, especially running on R290 proper units. I would suggest you do install uh, one of these and you control the hot water temperature coming out from the store. Out of the box, most heat pumps will not work with mini stores almost at all or the performance will be very, very poor. And there is a number of changes we have to do. The first one on Valent is a change we have to make on the heat pump interface unit. So we need to change the hot water mode. Valent allows three modes, eco, balanced and normal. Normal allows to run the unit at maximum output for hot water. In my case, in the summer, as I said, it's nine kilowatts, which is a lot for a five kilowatt unit. Uh, if you set it to eco, it's gonna run much more efficiently, but it will take much longer to recharge the cylinder. And it uh, caps the output of the heat pump somewhere around between four and 4.5 uh, kilowatts. So we should change that eco setting to a normal setting because we want to have as much power available from that unit as possible. On this controller, we have to change three main settings. Mini store needs higher store temperature. We're gonna set it to between 55 and 60 degrees. We also have to change hysteresis. Hysteresis is the temperature difference at which the heat pump will start recharging the cylinder. So for example, if we set the store to 55 degrees, the heat pump will not start recharging it unless the temperature drops to the hysteresis we set. You set the hysteresis to 10, for example, the heat pump will not kick in till the store temperature drops 10 degrees below 55, so it's going to be 45 or below. However, we don't want a high hysteresis here. What we want to do is to set the absolute minimum hysteresis available because we want that heat pump to kick in as soon as the temperature in the store drops. And on Valent controls, the lowest hysteresis we can set is three degrees. And then the last setting we need to have a look at is anti-cycle time. We don't want the heat pump to be prevented from starting on hot water at all. So we need to set the anti-cycle time on hot water cycle to zero. So we have no anti-cycle time whatsoever. It's time to talk about the variables that will affect the performance of the mini store on a given system. And HeatGeek has created a very nice app that allows you to input all your variables and it will estimate the performance. Obviously the first variable is the size of the mini store. Uh, they come in different sizes. We're testing the smallest one, so the most extreme one, 60 liters only called extra small. Second variable is going to be flow rate that we expect to have from the hot water tap. And you need to manage the expectations here. You will not get amazing flow rates from mini stores, especially from extra small. Then we have uh, the store temperature. So the mini store temperature we are uh, maintaining. The higher the temperature, the more energy we can store and the higher the flow rate or the longer the runtime is going uh, to be. Then we've got hot water temperature, obviously. The hotter it's going to be, the shorter the run, the lower the flow rate. The first test is going to be a bit extreme. I'm gonna run hot water at full flow, trying to feel the bath, just seeing 
how much hot water we're gonna get at full flow from the main store. After around 1 minute 40 seconds, the temperature dropped below 38 degrees, which is not hot enough for the bath. We've got around one third of the bath with 39 degrees water, again, just about enough for the bath. So if I slow that down to seven liters a minute, let's see what happens. If you can fill that bath up and have a water that's over 40 degrees. I'm watching the open energy monitor because that gives me the flow temperature of my heat pump so I know when it's fully recharged and I know when I'll be able to start filling the bath again. It really should be about five to seven minutes. So in real life, if you try to fill a bath, you wouldn't have to wait that long, but it seems you'd have to go in two stages, fill it probably half at slower flow rate, it would cool down and fill it up yet again. We've been running uh, the tap now for almost five minutes and it's holding a steady 43 degrees, so it's promising. After 15 minutes, we've got almost full bath of 40 degree water. This has been an extreme example because the mini store really wasn't designed to run a full bath of hot water. It was designed for washing up and showering. But you can see that if you have to have a bath, it's doable. Limit the flow, have a bit of patience, and it just about works. On the shower, you also have to uh, tightly control your flow rate. So I'm using flow limiters. It's a little disc that goes between your shower hose and a shower head. I've got a five liters per minute flow limiter installed, and I'm also using a special shower head, a low flow shower head. It has tiny waterways, so with low flow, the jets of water shooting out from that shower head have ha much higher velocity. So they feel like way more flow coming from them. They feel like they have much better pressure. I just got back from a five kilometers run in a very, very hot day. It's about 27, 28 degrees out there. And this is the best time to see for how long I'll be able to run my shower on the minister till the water stops running comfortably hot. Clock's running. Ten minutes, forty-one seconds. Store heated to fifty-five degrees, twenty-seven degrees outside. Heat pump running on full output. We're getting ten minute usable shower at the flow rate. I would say at around five liters. I like Minister for uh, washing the dishes quite a lot because you have on-demand hot water. It's always there. You don't have to worry about hot water schedules. I've been using the Minister now for two weeks. Has Natalie made any comments yet? Yes, but we'll get to that later. And the Minister is perfectly fine for showering. You can even have a bath with it at a push. What we don't know, however, is how this unit will perform in the winter, especially during defrosts. Just came back from another 5K run, and this time I'm gonna test the shower with the heat pump set to eco. So I'm limiting the output of the heat pump to around four kilowatts. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to simulate winter conditions. So lower output of the heat pump. I'm gonna time the shower again, and I'm really not expecting to get too much showering time this time. This is going to be, uh, purely subjective as I'm not measuring the temperature, I'm just showering for as long as the water doesn't feel comfortable enough. So I just had a very decent shower and I showered for 7 minutes 20 seconds and the water was still feeling warmish, completely acceptable, never very cold and the unit was running at around 4 kilowatt output and you can see here at the open energy monitor uh, data the return temperature never dropped below 40 degrees so my showering temperature was probably around 40 degrees as well. So perfectly acceptable, which is a surprising result because it seems you can use that shower at only four kilowatt input from the heat pump and it's still perfectly usable. However, Natalie is going to have a shower now. She's gonna shower after me. Let's see if she notices anything different. Mm. 
Another five kilometers run today on the hottest day of the year, 31 degrees outside. Absolutely kidding. And I'm also gonna run the most brutal test now in the shower. I'm turning the heat pump off completely just to see for how long the energy stored in 60 liters of water can give me around five to six liters of comfortable showering. And to be honest, I don't mind if it goes cold. It's probably gonna be really nice if it does. I'm gonna time it and I'm gonna show you how long the shower can run. And the idea behind it is, is that in the winter, we're gonna keep the store at hotter temperature so it can breach uh, the defrost. Right now, the store is at 55 degrees, heat pumps off. Let's see for how long it's going to run. A rather unexpected result. I run the shower for five minutes, and after five minutes of running it at around six liters per minute, I was quite careful not to run it too fast. The water was still really hot, comfortably hot, so I fully opened it to probably, I would say it won't go more than eight liters, maybe nine, with that shower head and a flow limiter. And it ran till eight minutes, or seven minutes, 40 seconds, till the water started to cool down a bit. Minister has 60 liters capacity. It should be a comparable performance to a uh, 60 liter unvented cylinder. So if you run seven liters a minute and you mix some cold, you should get 10 minutes of a nice showering just from the store. What it means is that there's a big chance that if you uh, raise the temperature in the winter to 60 or 65 degrees uh, in the mini store, you will be able to breach the five minute defrost gap. That unit has big chances of performing pretty well all year round. I'm gonna show you what Adam Chapman, who designed this product, has to say about Minister performance during defrosts at this year's installer show in NEC Birmingham. What happens between zero and minus two when a unit goes to defrost and your mains water is around five degrees. I've not thought about that in my sleep for um, six months. Because uh, when I tested mine, it was seven degrees outside, so it wasn't as cold as it could be. Um, uh, and where I am with it now, this still does need testing, but we're so far over capacity, uh, it's not really a worry. We have a built-in optional immersion heater to reheat it, if that was a worry. Um, uh, but essentially, when it's minus three outside, your heating system's gonna be hot. It's immediately gonna get hit with 40 degree radiator water and start recharging way earlier than it would in the summer. Um, uh, the other thing that was slightly worrying me was defrost spiraling. If you're a heat pump engineer, you probably know what that is. It's where it goes into defrost, it struggles to catch back up with itself. Um, this is less likely to defrost because it spends less time on the hot water. It recharges quickly, gets back to heating, uh, so you don't get that spiral effect. Um, uh, but when you spec these, I think the number one thing to be aware of is that we want a minimum shower time of eight minutes. If we have a minimum shower time of eight minutes, um, we know, one, we've got um, enough shower, uh, showering time to have a shower, but two, if you've got that five minute defrost cycle, which is typical uh, for, for a valent, you've got that uh, gap there to um, allow the heat pump to move back over and start recharging the cylinder. I've been running this mini store for a month now and I'm very pleasantly surprised by its performance. I must admit, I was uh, skeptical about it being able to perform at all and it's done just fine, granted. It's summer, it's the easiest period for, for any heat pump and the uh, mains water is the highest temperature as well. But I've run any tests I could just to prove that that unit will perform in the winter as well. Remember to subscribe to this channel because we will run winter tests of this unit in this winter. Uh, when it comes to uh, running cost and efficiency, right now this unit in the summer, uh, it operates at a COP of 2.5. Uh, compare it to the big cylinder here, a super cylinder from Newark that runs at around 4.7. So have the efficiency and obviously have the running cost. We also have to talk about wear and tear on your heat pump. Uh, big cylinder for us in our household, there's only two of us, runs one cycle a day. This little thing when we use it daily runs about five, maybe 10 cycles a day and at higher temperatures as well because storing water in big cylinder 45 degrees is enough this one needs to run at 55 and potentially 60 in the winter. So there'll be definitely more wear and tear on the compressor on your uh, heat pump. I would only consider this unit if you really do not have space 
for a full-sized cylinder, not to save space in case you have space for it. If you live in a flat, the only place it can go is uh, under the kitchen counter, literally no other space. Yes, this is a viable option if you accept the limitations. Another limitation is obviously flow rate. If you get big shower heads, if you want to fill a bath or use the bath regularly, the minister, especially extra small, it's not for you. You're probably also curious how my wife Natalie uh, reacted to the minister and what she thinks about its performance. When Simon said he was going to put in a mini store, I was a bit like, oh no, another experiment with like our heating and hot water. But actually, using the shower, I didn't really notice any difference. The only thing I really noticed was how you use the tap. So normally you would put the tap all the way to get the most hot water. Whereas with this one, it was you only had to open the tap a little bit and then that's optimum hot water. But other than that, I thought it was okay. Um, I think if I had to choose, I'd probably say I'd prefer the normal cylinder only because it feels like you get better pressure, more hot water. But I can definitely see how if you're in a smaller flat, um, it would be work really well. Now, we've talked a lot about producing hot water with the mini store and saving valuable space. However, full-size cylinders have many benefits that may persuade you not to use the mini store. You should watch this video here, as it will help you make your mind up if you should go with the mini store or a full-size cylinder.